Hello everyone, I'm Vishnu, I'm a data scientist. In the previous video, we learned everything about ANOVA. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to calculate F score by AND. If you haven't watched my previous video, I highly suggest you to watch my previous video and come back to this video. Alright, let's begin. Let's say this is our data set. Let's take company first and calculate F score. There are three different companies. Let's take all three companies and their corresponding salary. The idea behind ANOVA is calculate between group variance and divide it by within group variance. If the F score is high, then that feature is important. Or if the F score is less, then that feature is not important. So we have to calculate both between group variance as well as within group variance. First, let's calculate within group variance. To calculate within group variance, we have to divide sum of squares within groups by its degrees of freedom. But what is the sum of squares within groups? How to calculate this? Let me show you. To calculate sum of squares within group, take mean of each group and subtract each and every value from its mean and square the difference, add them together. You will get sum of squares within group for individual group. Finally, we have to add all these values together we will get sum of squares within group. To calculate within group variance, we have to divide this value by its degrees of freedom. For within group variance, the degrees of freedom will be number of samples minus number of categories. Here we have 15 samples and 3 categories. So the degrees of freedom will be 15 minus 3 which is 12. Now we have sum of squares within group as well as degrees of freedom. So simply we can calculate within group variance. If we divide sum of squares within groups by its degrees of freedom, we will get within group variance. So we are done with the first part. Now let's calculate between group variance. To calculate between group variance, we have to divide sum of squares between groups by its degrees of freedom. To calculate sum of squares between groups, we have to take all the values and consider them as one group. Then take the mean value. After that, Take each and every group mean and subtract it from the total mean. Then square the difference, add them together. Then we have to multiply it by 5. But where this 5 comes from? It comes from here. The total number of samples within each group. We have 5 samples in each group. That is why we are multiplying it by 5. It means we are doing this calculation for each and every sample. So if you multiply it by 5, you will get sum of squares between group. To calculate between group variance, we have to divide sum of squares between groups by its degrees of freedom. For between group variance, the degrees of freedom will be number of categories minus 1. In this case, we have 3 categories. So the degrees of freedom will be 3 minus 1, which is 2. If we divide sum of squares between groups by its degrees of freedom, we will get between group variance. Now we have both between group variance as well as within group variance. So simply we can calculate F score. It is 73.493. The next step is we have to take these three informations. The F score, degrees of freedom for between group and the degrees of freedom for within group. But why do we need this degrees of freedom? Well, we need this degrees of freedom to get the critical value from the F table. We have to get the critical value for 2,12 degrees of freedom. That is why we need this degrees of freedom. In this case, the critical value is 3.89. After getting the critical value, we have to refer the F distribution. Let's say the critical value approximately falls here, then everything left to this line will be my acceptance region and everything right to this line will be my rejection region. In this case, the F score will approximately come here. As a rule of thumb, if the F score is greater than the critical value, straight away we can reject the null hypothesis. Here, the null hypothesis is there is no difference between groups and the alternative hypothesis is there is a difference between group. In this case, the F score is greater than the critical value. So straight away we can reject the null hypothesis and we can conclude that there is a significant difference between groups. So this feature is important. If you are interested in p-value, which is nothing but the total area which is right after this particular point. Obviously, there is nothing after 73. That is why the probability value is 0. If you calculate F score for location feature, this will be your output. 
In this case, the F score will approximately come here. As you can see here, the F score is lesser than the critical value. So we can't reject the null hypothesis. So the result will be there is not much difference between groups. So we can conclude that this feature is not important. Again, if you are interested in P value, which is nothing but the total area, which is right after this particular point. I mean the total area, which is right to this particular point. Obviously the entire area comes after this particular point. That is why the P value is 0.99. Usually people make decisions based on probability value only. If the probability value is lesser than 0.05, then we can reject the null hypothesis. And if the probability value is greater than 0.05, we can't reject the null hypothesis. In this case, the probability value is 0.99, which is very, very far away from 0.05. That's why we can't reject null hypothesis. That's it. That's all about ANOVA. In the next video, we are going to discuss about Chi-Square. If you are interested in learning Chi-Square, make sure you watch my next video. Hey.